Okay, here's an example of the law of sines. It's an ASA example. AAS is very easy to do with the law of sines as well. Um, and it's actually even slightly easier than what I'm showing here. So ASA is a pretty good one to look at. Um, what, I'm, what I've got is I've got this distance. This is side little c because it's opposite angle big C. And that's known to be 20. I've got an angle of 50 degrees here, an angle of 110 degrees here. And I want to find all the rest of the stuff. I want to solve the triangle. I want to find this angle, big C. I want to find side little a and side little b. Well, the first thing to do anytime you're given two angles is just solve for the third, third angle. It's very, that's very easy. So C is just going to be 180 minus the 50 and then minus 110. And so that's going to be 20 degrees. OK. Now, to get little a and little b, that's where the law of the sines comes in. Okay, So let me do that on the pretty printing here. So law of sines, remember, says sine a over a. It's, a one, it's very easy to remember because it's very symmetrical. Sine c over c. And um, there's other ways to write it, but that's the traditional way to write it. And um, in fact, let me write it one other way. You can take the reciprocal of absolutely everything here. Whoops. I'm not suggesting you have to memorize various different forms of it. But sometimes it's, it's just good to note that there's nothing special about the signs being on the, the top that much. Um, the, uh, this is maybe slightly more convenient sometimes for solving for sides. Okay, So either way you want to think about it, they're both true. So in this case, what do we want? Well, this part of the equation, relating A and B, isn't terribly useful because those are both unknown sides. It would be two uh, unknowns in one equation. We want to focus on relating everything to C because that's the known side. So always relate an unknown to a known if you possibly can do it, unless, you wanna, um, unless it's a really genuinely complicated problem. So let's put stuff in. Sine of, we got 50 degrees over A, that's the unknown we want to get, is sine of C, and that's why we, oops, that's why we really wanted to get that C, so we could put that in there, over 20. Okay. So, and again, if we had started with this version, it would be, sl this next step would be slightly easier, but it's not a big deal. Let's just cross multiply. 20 sine 50 degrees equals a sine 20 degrees. And that's a very common step. You'll see like side times sine, side times sine. And they won't match now because they've been, they've been uh, switched. The a is not matching the 50 and the 20 is not matching the 20. And now we can isolate a. Oops, let's just put it on this side. So we're getting 20 times a ratio of sines. And that's always what we get when we solve for one side. It's always going to be another side times a ratio of sines. Not something you have to memorize, but just something to be familiar. This is the only way it's going to be in the right units. If like 20 is in kilometers and A is in kilometers, it shouldn't be like 1 over 20. That shouldn't be divided by or doing something weird to it. And then these, the, these guys, the signs, don't have any units associated with them. So it makes sense in terms of uh, unit considerations as well. And now finally, we just put that in the calculator. And we, so we get 44 point, basically 44.8 is side A. Okay. Now side B, same deal. We're just gonna use the relate side B. Now we could actually use sine A if we want, but C's maybe a little simpler. Okay. And let me show you how we could use this version. Again, it's totally not uh, essential. It's just ever so slightly simpler. B over sine B, which is 110 degrees, equals 20 over sine 20 degrees. It just takes out one step. It just means you just have to multiply by sine 110. So b is, again, 20 times a ratio of sines. Sine 110 degrees over sine 20 degrees. And we just evaluate it, and we're done. So that's going to be 54.95. Okay. Now we want to do a reality check. This was a long, skinny triangle, and so it makes sense that A and B are substantially larger than C, it also makes sense that B is larger than A. Notab notably, it's the opposite the largest angle. Remember, if you're, uh, 
the longest side is always opposite the largest angle. So that's a good check that B is coming out bigger than A.